witches, I hope this video finds you all well. I have decided to make a return to vlogging and I thought today would be the appropriate day to do it because the 5th of June is actually my vlogiversary in that it was a year ago today that I uploaded my very first YouTube video on my channel. So I thought it seemed like a good thing to, to relaunch my channel again on the day that I initially started it. So there's going to be a few changes to the way I do my videos, but I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But I just thought I'd outline um, what I was going to talk about in this video. I just really wanted to catch you all up on the things that I've been doing over the last few months in my absence on YouTube. And so I'll do a little report on how I've been getting on with Operation Threadporn. I'll show you briefly my current whips at the moment and then I'll show you one finish, sizable finish, that I've had so far this year that you haven't seen on YouTube yet. And then after all of that, I decided to go through my chart stash the other day and be really honest with myself. I channeled my sister and really asked myself, these charts, am I going to stitch them or not? And I picked out a few charts from my stash that I know that I really don't think doesn't there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not things that I'm going to stitch now. And also it includes some charts that I have already stitched, but I was just holding on to them for no apparent reason because it's not like I'm going to stitch them again. So we'll deal with that at the end. But first of all, just very briefly, um, my YouTube channel. I've decided to get back into making videos regularly again, but this time the videos that I make will be much shorter, much more topic focused more frequent and the reason I've decided to do that is because there's all sorts of aspects of needlework that I'm interested in and my projects that I'll be stitching will cover sort of a much broader range than just cross stitch although obviously I appreciate that my videos have never been necessarily 100% cross stitch there's all sorts of counter thread work that I enjoy doing but I thought by making them topic based it means that if you're not interested in anything else other than cross stitch you can just pick the videos that you want to watch that are cross stitch related. I understand that not everybody's going to be interested in, you know, drawn thread work that I do, hard hanger that I do, gold work that I'm doing. So that way I make my videos shorter and more focused, then you can pick and choose which videos you're interested in or not, as the case may be. That way also makes it a bit easier for me as well. Because I found that doing sort of monthly whip updates um, really wasn't working for me. So I decided to sort of revamp my channel and that's what it's going to be about now, sort of needlework, broader topic of needlework. So hopefully um, there'll be something of interest to all of you somewhere along the line. So that's what's going to be happening. And what I also thought I would do is for each project I start, I will do a you know quick video about the chart, the threads I'm going to use, the fabric I'll be using, why I chose the chart, a bit about the designer, that type of thing. And then when I finish the project, I do another video showing the finished item, my thoughts on it, um, how the chart read, you know, that kind of thing, sort of a review of the project in general. So they'll be a lot shorter, but you'll easily be able to, you know, if you're interested in a particular piece of stitching, you can catch up on it and what I've done with it. If you're not interested, then you don't need to bother watching it. So videos will be on those topics. Also, um, I've had quite a few requests to do sort of hard hanger videos. So I'm going to do some basic um, hard hanger videos, sort of hard hanger 101, you know, materials that you need, types of stitches, possibly demonstrating cutting and things like that. Um, if there's any sort of other topics in that sort of area uh, on a specific subject that you can think of that you'd like to know more about or you think I can help you with, then obviously comment below and I'll consider making a video on that topic. So, where to start? Begin at the very beginning. Okay, let's start with an update on Operation Threadborn. Now, as some of you long time subscribers know, I set myself a little challenge this year of using as many of my hand dyed threads in my stash as possible. I was aiming to use a percentage of around 12 to 15 percent and it's been going really well and I'm so glad I decided to sort of set myself that challenge as I've really enjoyed it and it's seen me use a range you know stitch a range of different designs my finishes haven't necessarily been different 
But to be honest, it's more important for me to actually finish them somehow. It doesn't matter if I make 100 cushions or 100 stretch canvases, I really don't care. It's the fact that I've made it into something I can display in my home and that makes me happy. And also the drawer is not quite as full as it would have been otherwise. I've also found it really interesting to use a variety of different thread brands in quite quick succession. Each month I set myself a freebie project and also a little piece of hard anger to do each month. And using all those different thread brands um, quite closely together, it does help you, or helps me, to really compare the different brands and really think about what I like going forward from this challenge, the threads that perhaps I might like to add a few more to my collection. I will say that this challenge, with the help of my sister, I do think I am almost cured of my thread buying addiction. I think it's really made me look at the threads that I already have, and I have such a lot, that the thought of buying more unnecessary threads just doesn't seem right somehow. So I've got my sister to thank for that. I still love threads, um, and there are some brands that I would like to add more of the range to my collection but that's something for me to think about maybe towards the end of the year. Operation Threadpoint is definitely something that I'm going to roll forward and going into next year. I'll just tweak it a bit slightly and I won't get so hung up on the numbers that I'm using but I just want to make sure that I'm always using the stash that I have to the best of my ability in my stitching. So what are the statistics so far? So at the end of May I had used 10.9% of my hand dye stash which I'm really pleased with and I have one project in particular to thank for that. Any of you that have been following me on Instagram or on my blog know what project that is. But I didn't think I'd get this far that that quickly into the year so I know I'm probably gonna go over my total which is great. Um, but considering the amount of thread that I have and the amount I have to use to get to that 10% it's quite a lot of thread. So it's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it, really. So 10.9% of my hand dye stash I've used. I have used, to date, so far this year, 38 different types of stitch to complete my stitching. So that includes, you know, my hard hanger stitches as well, and the drawn thread work, and all of it, not just cross-stitch, obviously, otherwise it would only be one stitch that I'd done all year. Well, two maybe with back stitch. And so far this year I have had 17 finishes. Most of them obviously have been smalls with Operation Thread Porn. Uh, I've had a few bigger finishes, obviously I had the Mirabilia at the beginning of the year. But as the year goes on, I'll have um, more finishes, it's more sizeable finishes, not just, you know, little pieces. So I thought I'd just, rather than show you all the stuff I've done for Operation Thread Porn, I just thought I'd pick two projects, one hard end and one freebie project, just to show you the type of thing that I've been doing. Um, so one of the projects, um, freebie projects I did was a design by Glory B called Stitching Days. Quite a few people have stitched it, you've probably seen it around on Instagram. But I decided to make it my finish, my finished stitching, into a sort of very rudimentary, I stress that it is rudimentary, need a book. So that's um, what I did. You can see it there. So it says I only stitch on days that end in Y. I used um, chromatic alchemy fabric. It's a solo, so it's not a specific colour, it's just a random and piece that Sam had left over. And I use silks from Thread Pickers in Fuchsia and P3, and I used a Rose Petite Treasure Braid. You can sort of just see that there. And obviously there's a few different stitches. There's Herringbone Stitch, Smyrna's Rice Stitch, Four Sided Stitch, and there's obviously Satin Stitch down the bottom, and I sort of added some beads and some sparkle and all that stuff. So I just made it into a very, very basic needle book. I'm still no seamstress, you know, that's not my bag really. I'd like to be better at it, and I'm sure with practice I would get better, but it's not necessarily where my heart lies. So I just made it into a little, little needle book, and I just, I found some random purple linen in my stash, and I just sort of made, um, little labels for them. So I've got my beading needles, chenille needles, cruel needles, straw needles and obviously tapestry needles. Essential to cross stitches. So yeah, 
that's that's what I did. So that's that one. And just a piece of hard dang I picked out one of the one of the squares I did. This is the square from April. So I chose sort of I don't know why April seems orange to me. Maybe it's daffodils or something, but that's more March. Anyway, I don't know. I just I felt that April was orange, so that's what we went with. So here's a little hard anger square I did for that month. Funnily enough, for this one, I think I didn't use any necessarily fancy hand dye threads. I think only the bullion knots in the middle. The rest of it is um, DMC variations or variegations because there were two two types that they had once upon a time. So the stitches used in that one, the filling stitch for the hard anger is a Greek cross and this stitch down the centre forming that cross is Portuguese ladder stitch and in the middle is a stitch that I lovingly refer to as maggot stitch. Not only because they look like maggots but they're just horrible stitches to do really, they're not my favourite and that's um, bullion knots. I'm sure any of you that have done them may feel the same way. Um, but just um, one little tip, I don't know, can I give tips? Bullion knots are wrap stitches, so a bit like French, they're not like French knots, but I mean in the sense that you wrap the thread around your needle to create the stitch. Um, and e something to make it a bit easier, instead of using a tapestry needle to do it, I used a straw needle or a milliner's needle. And the reason why I did that is because with a tapestry needle, let's just get one out, let's get a fat one out so you can, I mean, you all know what tapestry needles look like. But obviously with a tapestry needle, the eye of the needle is thicker than the rest of the shaft of the needle. So sometimes you wrap something around the end of the needle quite tightly. And then when you go to pull the needle through, the eye of the needle just won't, won't go through the wrap stitches. So you have to unwind it and wrap it again. So I use a straw needle or a milliner's needle because they, the eye of the needle is the same width as the shaft of the needle. Let's find a big one, one that you can see. So the eye of the needle is quite, it's a lot finer, but there's not that large sort of bump. I'm not focusing very well on it, but you get, you get them what I mean. So when you wrap wrap your thread around and pull it through, it's sort of a much smoother action. So I use, I swap my needle around to do that. Um, and sometimes if I'm doing a lot of French knots in a project, like over and over again, not just the odd one or two, then I'll swap the needle out for a straw needle because it just makes it a bit easier. Um, any other fancy stitches in that one? No, just some, some little road stitches in the corners. But yeah, so that's just an example of Operation Thread Pawn Hard Anger that I've been doing. So, so far I've done five of those and I'm really enjoying it. It's really nice to get back into Hard Anger and do some different stitches and things like that again. So, yes, so far Operation Thread Pawn has been 100% successful. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is just very briefly um, go through all the whips that I have at the moment. I'm not going to go into any great depth about the fabrics and threads used or the stitches that are used in them because as they get finished, I will do a finished video where I will go into all of those things. Um, but obviously if you want to know, you know a thread or fabric that was used, you can just ask or all the information is actually on my blog. Everything I talk about I will link to below. So all of these designs I'll put a link to in the description of the video. Um, so you can, if you're interested in any of them, you can go and find them and look them up for yourself. So let's start with the first whip. This one is a stitch along on the Yahoo Stitch Specialist group. It's a new stitch along. It's a drawn thread um, based stitch along. So it's a band sampler. Um, it's called Milady's Blossom Garden. And you need to be a member of the Stitch Specialist Yahoo group to be able to have access to the pattern, but anybody can join. I think some of you are probably members anyway. But so far, parts one and two have come out. Uh, the design was released in April, so I've done April and May's part. And I think Abby, the designer, is releasing one part each month. And I think there's six parts. I'm not sure how many parts there are, but it's a pretty, you know, long piece of fabric. So there's a fair bit to go yet, put it that way. So this is how far I've got parts one and two. Part one was everything above the drawn thread band and 
part two was a drawn thread band and a little cross stitch band there. So it's always hard to see the thread bands. But I'm stitching it in silks, various different silks, and there's metallic and obviously the pearl thread there for the drawn thread band. So that drawn thread band is hem stitch and diamond hem stitch, and the diamond hem stitch is a stitch that's going through the centre. So I'm really enjoying that one, and I'm so I'm actually quite pleased with the way my rotation has been the last few months because I've had sort of all different aspects of counted thread work in it. So it's just kept it more interesting for me really and kept me interested in the pieces that I'm stitching. So I've had a balance of pieces that are just cross stitch which are really easy to stitch in the evenings when you're watching telly or Netflix or whatever. And then I've got other projects like the next one um, that are sort of a, take a bit more concentration to do so. I quite like um, that sort of variety really. So the next project is very very near its finish so hopefully sometime this month I will upload a finished video for this one and go into a lot more detail um, about how I've completed this piece and this piece is, um, some of you have seen it I know, is a confetti of hardanger which again is actually by the same designer as the drawn thread piece um, Abby Gurdon. This one's available on her website, not the Yahoo group her own website Bees Need Works. There's 15 parts to it and I've completed parts 1 to 14 so there's only one part left to go. I don't know what state it's in. Hopefully it's all right but that's where it's up to. Looking through the holes hopefully you can see that. So I filled in all there's filling stitches in all those little boxes now so the only thing the only thing it seems a pretty mammoth part to me but basically all I have left to do is this border here between the two cloister block sections so all of this all the way around the outside all of that's got to be cut and wrapped um, with well not necessarily wrapped but there's going to be buttonhole bars going all the way around it and dove's eyes so that's going to take a fair bit of time not only to cut all of that but also to do all those filling stitches so hopefully that will get done by the end of the month and I'll be really pleased with that because I've had that pattern in my stash for oh I don't know since 2012 and I was terrified when I when I signed up to do the stitch along I knew that at the time it wasn't my I didn't have the skills to, to, to do it but after having completed it now I actually found it I didn't find it easy I didn't find it difficult, I found it challenging in a good way if that makes any sense and I really, I really enjoyed doing it and I definitely want to do bigger pieces of hard anger. But it's always good to have, a mi I find, it's always good to have a mixture of things in your rotation um, because obviously some aspects of this, like doing all the buttonhole stitch around the outside took forever and you can get a bit bored so then I've swapped to something else so that's why I choose to do so many different types of things because it keeps me engaged and keeps me interested. Now this next one a lot of people are stitching. It's a black work piece so so far in my rotation I've had drawn thread, hard anger and now I've got black work. Um, you all know what it is, it's Box of Delights by Liz Almond. It's um, a stitch along in six parts so it'll finish in August and I have just finished stitching block four which was released on Monday the 1st of June. The blocks are released on the 1st of the month. So there we go, that's how far I've got, so I've just, just got a little bit of the black left to do, I kind of do that as and when, when I'm, you know, need a bit of easy stitching I'll just do a bit of the black, do a few threads of black. Again when I do the, when this gets finished in August I'll do a video going through all the threads and everything that I've used but for the moment I'll just say it's Jodo Designs and it's stitched on um, 28 count Lugana, they're all Jodo Designs threads and um, um, petite treasure braid metallics to accent little bits and pieces for a bit of sparkle and lastly well sort of lastly I might show you the other one last cross stitch piece anyway um, this is a design that I talked about before in another video ages ago now probably a whole almost a whole year ago it's the butterfly quote design that you can find for free on the Jodra Designs Facebook group page. There's a link in the files to it. Um, so I finally started stitching it despite the fact I've had it kitted up for eons. But 
here it is so again this one too is also near a finish so I'll do a finish video for that my goal is to finish this by the end of the month so I've only got two more words to do um, the word that's missing is world and then I've obviously got the butterfly um, to stitch in there as well so only two bits left of that so that'll be my nice easy stitching in between cutting out and doing those buttonhole bars and the hard hanger um, again that's Joe's Designs threads and it's stitched on 36 count linen over two obviously I'm sure you can tell that by the size of the font so those are all the cross stitch well it's not all cross stitch is it those are all my counted thread work projects um, that are currently in my rotation um, two of them will be finished fingers crossed this month the other two are obviously ongoing um, stitch alongs where parts are being released now the other thing I've been working on, which I'll just show you very briefly, just as evidence that I have been doing it. It looks a bit of a state at the moment because I had meant to finish it off a bit better for the video, but I didn't. So this is really how it's going to be now. It's going to be warts and all, start as you mean to go on. But I'll just very briefly show you um, what I've been doing in regards to gold work. Now as I say, it does look a bit of a fright, don't, don't panic. I haven't plunged the ends in, which will mean nothing to you. But I will do a video, um, again I hope to finish this by the end of the month, I will do a video on my experiences with gold work, how I found it. Obviously I can't speak with any authority whatsoever about gold work. I've obviously read a lot about it and things like that, but I have been persuaded that it's okay to talk about my personal experience of doing gold work, even though I... I am no expert whatsoever, so it would very much be my, how I found it, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy. So that will be another video coming shortly, um, whenever I get round to finishing this particular piece of work. But yeah, see these bits here that are sticking up, they actually get, uh, they need to be plunged, which basically means pulling them back through the fabric. Um, I've done it for the top the top ones in here but I haven't done it for the ends but so that's my gold work that's what it looks like I have made mistakes on it it's not perfect it's not going to be perfect it's the first time I've ever done it in fact it's the first time I've done anything that is surface embroidery not counted um, thread work embroidery so it's no small wonder but I absolutely love I love doing it and there's certain elements of it that I want to carry through to other projects but again I'll talk about that at another time so, oh, now we're up to the big, big finish, which you all know, anyway, and that is plum pudding. I started it back in March as a stitch along with uh, my friend Nick, who's a, a blogger, and she's, she'll, she's on YouTube, watches YouTube videos, and she's on Instagram, she's xstitch23, so I know a lot of you know who she is. She's not been very well for quite a few weeks, so if you're watching this, Nick, I hope you get well soon. But we decided to stitch plum pudding together because we both love the design, we love purple, you know, we like all the same things. So we thought it would be nice to do it together. So we started it, decided to start it on the 1st of March and then we chose to stitch on it for the first week in every month. So from the 1st to the 7th of every month. And actually it worked out quite well because unbeknownst to us in April and May, um, there were bank holiday weekends. Um, in the period of time that we set aside to work on the piece so it meant that we got a lot more time potentially to stitch on it because we had extra days off and things like that so that was quite good now in typical me style i actually finished my plum pudding nick is still working on hers so um she forgave me for finishing first so we're still friends and we're still talking it's all good Yep, so I finished I finished mine um, last month at the beginning in May. I know a lot of you have already seen this on Instagram. But this design actually only took me 14 days to stitch. Obviously that's not 14 consecutive days or even, you know, days as in I sat and stitched for 10 hours each day. I mean, on the bank holidays I stitched, you know, a fair portion of the day, but not all the days but anyway so I just I just count days and by days I mean I picked up the piece of needlework that day whether it was for an hour two hours four hours whatever but that's when I say 14 days that's what I mean so here it is all finished 
and I love it. Don't ask me what I'm going to do with it. It's been sat in a drawer for a month, so I'll get told off about that, I'm sure. But I really enjoyed stitching it. It was a really easy design to stitch. I found the chart easy to follow. Um, I stitched it exactly as it was charted. Obviously, with this design, there's so many different things you could do. You don't even have to stitch it in purple. You could do your own conversion. You don't have to use silks. You could use cottons. Um, you don't have to use beads. You could use metallics. I know a few people that are considering doing that that stitching this piece because they don't like beading and I reckon by my eye it'll be very easy to actually convert the beads to say petite treasure braid or silk lame braid something like that so you'd still get something a bit different um, yeah there's just endless possibilities with this design really and when I stitched the design I did it a bit differently to other people lots of people do it page by page so they work um, you know, across and down and around or whatever. But as a lot of you know, I just I started in the middle and um, completed each section. So um, it's sort of difficult to show. I can't hold it across myself. So I started. I did all the dark petals and then I did around again and then I did these bits. So the reason why I chose to do it that way, obviously, it's a mandala design. It's symmetrical. So I just find it easier to do the repeats one after the other. So I've already got the thread and the needle and by the time you've stitched something for the possibly, you know, eighth time, you kind of know the pattern off by heart, you know exactly how many stitches across it is or down or whatever. So I just find it speeds things up and possibly why I finished it quite so quickly. I also can't remember exactly how many colours of silk it used. One, two, three, four, six. Only one of them is variegated and that's the Mooney Ponds which is this, that colour. So it's kind of variegated blue and purple. And I just stitched it slightly differently. Um, I changed the direction that I stitched to match the direction that the petal, where I saw them as petals, was pointing, if that makes any sense. I talked about it a bit more on my blog and there's some close-up pictures on there. But I just, you know, chose to do that just to add in a... I don't know, make it more difficult for myself. I guess it slowed me down, otherwise I would have finished it even quicker if I just stitched it as it was. So in some cases I stitched um, horizontally, vertically, and in some cases sort of diagonally upwards in order to get the variegation effect that I wanted for that particular piece. And the beading was quite easy as well. Um, there was only five colours, four colours of these. Four colours of beads. One thing I will say regarding the beads are two things I'll say. If any of you are looking to do this design, on the materials list it lists um, a DMC anchor or Sullivan's floss. You don't actually need that to stitch the design that is solely just for the beading. I always bead with clear thread so I didn't use that. So if you use Nemo, Nemo, Nimo, I don't know how you say it. Now I've said it out loud, I don't know. If you use a clear beading thread anyway, you won't need to get that floss that's listed on the materials list. And with the beads, personally I found, so obviously your mileage may vary depending on whether you're a bead dropper or not. I don't tend to be. There's one of the beads, um, 02083. It's the only one out of the four that it tells you to buy two packs for. I found that I only needed one pack and I haven't missed any beads off because I've checked. <laughs> um, and there were still some left over in the first pack. But what I did find, and I dug it out to show you, is for 03053, the purple passion beads, I had that many beads left. So, what have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 beads left. So if you're a person that is, shall we say, slightly on the clumsier side, you might find you might need another pack of those beads. I honestly thought I was going to run out of those. It would have really annoyed me if I had, but fortunately I had a tiny amount to spare. And with the silks, um, I think this is my fault somewhere along the line. But one of the silks you need is 139 Boulia. And I found by the end of the project, I quite literally, no exaggeration, had two strands. I had a length of thread left, so I had two strands left. And I think somewhere along the line, I'd cut a length of thread and it travelled somewhere else in my house but even so um, I'm not quite sure what went on with that so again 
if you are worried, because obviously you're talking about hand dyed threads, different thread, you know, dye locked, etc, etc, etc. And, and if, you, if you're a person that's not necessarily frugal with your thread, thread, if you're doing this pattern, you might consider possibly getting an extra skein of that because it only tells you, it's the only thread in the materials list that calls for one skein. But, you know, I just thought I'd say that just in case anybody else is planning on doing this design. But that's, those are my personal findings from stitching it just in case it helps anybody else. So as I say, everything that on here is as charted except the fabric. The fabric that the chart calls for is, um, picture this plus, um, obviously me being in the UK, it's not necessarily quite as easy to get hold of it. And I've, there's plenty of other fabric dyes in the UK that come up with beautiful fabrics, one of which is a crafty kitten. And that's the fabric that this is stitched on. It's 28 count Jaslyn in Candy Tuft. And it's the fabric Dawn recommends for this particular design. And it's the fabric I went with because I loved it. You know, it's pink and it's purple. And I'd forgotten how nice Jaslyn is to stitch on. It's a really nice fabric to use. So there we go, that's that one. So that's sort of my second, I don't know, it's not really a big finish. I don't really know. I count as big anymore to be honest. I don't know if it's the difficulty or the length of time something takes me, I don't know. But I'm really pleased with it anyway. And it's a lovely design to stitch and I know the Glendon Place designs are super popular and I think there's a really good reason for that because they're really fun designs to stitch. So there we go. Those are my whips and a finish. So now we get to the fun bit. As I say, um, as it is my vlogiversary, I felt, especially after my absence, I could offer something to some of you. I have pulled charts from my stash that I've either stitched or really don't think I'm going to get around to stitching. So I've got plenty to be getting on with um, that are further up my list than these. Um, so what I'm going to do is sort of a giveaway really, I guess. And they're sort of different groups of charts that I've grouped together from my personal stash. And I'm offering them to any of you that like the look of them. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. I don't mind sending them to America, Australia, Canada, Europe, you know, wherever you live. That isn't an issue at all. So if you see a selection of charts that you like, please feel free to enter. So all I ask really is that you only stake an interest in charts that you genuinely want to stitch. I'd be very annoyed if, you know, I saw these up on eBay or something. So please only, as I say, show an interest in them if you genuinely want to stitch them. I am not meaning that if you get have one of these charts, I expect you to stitch them in the next, you know, two weeks. I don't mean that at all. It doesn't matter to me if it's, you know, two years. As long as, you know, you genuinely want the chart. That's all I'm saying. And I'm sure you guys know what I mean. So how this is going to work. I have numbered the lots, shall we call them, and if you are interested in owning any of these charts, please comment below, as long as you're a subscriber to my channel, um, so this is open to all my long-suffering subscribers, and in your comment just say what number you're interested in. So there's numbers one to seven, and I will link um, to all the charts below, I'll write out um, the chart names and everything so if you don't if you just see the picture and you, you sort of don't catch the name or whatever just look in the description below and all the information will be there and I'll try and link to the charts so that you can see them on one two three stitch or so and so wherever I can find them so you can see the chart more clearly because you can't on YouTube but anyway I'll stop waffling now you get the idea there I've numbered them all and if you're interested in a chance of winning one of them then comment below and then I will randomly draw numbers I was going to say out of a hat, but I won't. I'll use the random number generator to allocate the charts to everybody. So I think I'll keep this open for a week. So the following Friday, whatever the date for that is, 13th or something, I don't know. Anyway, so a week from a week today. And when it's closed, obviously I'll, I'll um, amend the title of this video to show that. So... Without further ado, let's get in to... It's probably going to take just as long as the half an hour I spent waffling on about my stitching. But anyway. So, number one, the first lot, if you're interested in these. These are all designs by the Sweetheart Tree. And they're all part of the Teeny Weeny series. 
no not teeny weeny teeny tweeny now, now you're all gonna laugh because you know what i'm thinking anyway moving swiftly on teeny tweenies so there's different numbers but i'll show you them all and again i'll link below none of these i have stitched myself and they are just the charts some of them do include a few I think one of them includes the beads and little things but as I go through them I should, I'll um, let you know. So the first one is Covent Garden Rosebuds. It's got a little mark on the front, it must have been, I probably got these on eBay or something and then um, obviously they've tried to get rid of the price sticker but the chart inside is, is unmarked, obviously I can't show you that right now. So there's that one. And then we've got number 46 Windsor Rose, that's sort of got a bit of hard hanger in it. That one looked more, yeah. The first one is all cross stitch, but that one's got a bit of you know cloister blocks and stuff like that in. Then there's tapestry heart. And that one's dizzy busy bees. And the last one is bountiful blueberries. So they're just little tiny small designs, um, which you can obviously make into whatever you desire. So that's the first lot. So if you're interested in any in winning those then just comment that you like number one. Obviously you can enter as many of these as you want to, but obviously if the same person wins, then I'll draw another entry if that makes sense to you also. You know, if you're the luckiest person in the world, you enter for all seven of them and you win all seven, that's just not gonna happen because I'll, I'll redraw the entry so to make it fair and give other people a chance. So, Sweetheart Tree, number one. Number two are two designs that are linked, but they're by different makes different designers. The first one is Little House Needleworks. I've stitched this one up, you might remember me showing it to you in an old video. But that one's Summer Splendour. Again that's all cross stitch. Um, the chart, I better check now I've said it, the chart isn't marked at all because I would have stitched it from my iPad. No, the chart is entirely clean. So even though I've stitched it you wouldn't necessarily know. So that's that one. Little House Needlework Summer Splendour. And the other one is Country Cottage Needlework, and it's just a home sweet home design. So those two, if you're interested in the opportunity to win those, they are number two, lot two. The third lot are three Lizzie Kate designs. One of them I've stitched, you might remember, the other two I haven't, but again the charts are all unmarked. She checks quickly. Yeah. First one is um, Forgive Quickly. Second one is Housework Never Killed Anyone. And the last one is Love Crazy. So you can use the chart to sort of stitch those designs up differently, however you want to finish them. So there's your cake designs, those are lot three. The next lot are some Dinky Dyes designs. These, I don't think you can get them in the UK, but they're all just plain cross stitch designs. And they're based, they're sort of like quilt blocks really. Obviously you don't have to use Dinky Dyes, silks, whatever to stitch them, you can use whatever you like. But if you like the look of these patterns and would like to be with a chance of winning them, they are lot four. So there's Lassiter's Reef. Again, these have, you know, these charts are unmarked. I haven't stitched these myself. The second one is Lightning Ridge. So if you like geometric patterns, you might like these. You'd use some of your hand dye threads in your stash. And this last one is a free chart that came with a silk, um, a silk pack. But that, I've stitched that one, you might remember me showing it to you, Butterfly Garden. So the Dinky Dyes cross stitch, these are all just cross stitch, 100% cross stitch. They are number four, lot four. Lot five, I feel like I should be at an auction. This is um, Nora Corbett chart. It is Butterflies of the Meadow. I guess it is kind of odd that I'm giving this away because it's butterflies and I haven't stitched it, but I just really don't think I'm gonna end up stitching it. I've got lots of other plans. So I think it's only fair that it goes to a home where somebody will stitch it. It only uses three types of floss, two colour variations and one DMC cotton floss. And four types of Krennic, number four, very fine braid, and some 
I don't know why I'm reading this out to you because I can show you that, can't I? So there you go, that's the materials list, just in case you thought, oh my goodness, it's going to be like 20 million silks and I'll never stitch it. So that's the materials list there. So it's actually quite not too bad for that, for a Noracle bit really. So that one Noracle bit design is lot 5, so if you like to be with a chance to have that one, then that's the number you need to comment with. And now the final two charts are two charts that I've stitched and I'm willing to part with. The first one is this one, Spring Heart Sampler. I was going to dig out my finish of it, but you know, it shows you there on the picture. The reason why I've separated this one from the other Dinky Dyes designs is because obviously it contains speciality stitches and I know not everybody's into that, so that's why I've done this one separately. I absolutely adored stitching this design, I love it, and I wish I could get hold of the other ones in the series, but I'd have to put in an order for one, two, three stitch for that. You can't find this, I don't think, if you're in the UK, so if you are in the UK like me and you fancy winning, you know, fancy this one, then make sure you put your name down and you might win. So that's that one. So that's number six, Spring Heart Stinky Dye Sampler. Again, the chart is completely unmarked because I stitched it from my eye bag. And finally, I'm giving away my plum pudding, blend in place, plum pudding chart. Now you'll see that this chart is a bit sort of bent and battered. That has entirely nothing to do with me, but more to do with my idiotic postman trying to stuff it through a tiny letterbox. But the chart inside is completely unmarked and totally readable because, again, I stitched it from my iPad, so no problems there, it's just a bit creased up, which is annoying. So if you would like to be in with a chance to win the plum pudding chart, then number seven, lot seven, is the one you need to write in the comments. So I'll just do a quick recap. Number one was the Sweetheart Tree charts, five of those. Number two was a country cottage needlework chart and a little house needlework chart. Number three was a three Lizzie Kate charts. Number four was the three Dinky Dyes 100% cross stitch charts. Number five was the butterfly Nora Corbett chart. Number six was the spring heart Dinky Dye sampler chart. And number seven was plum pudding. They will all be linked below, so don't panic. And as I say, you can enter for the opportunity to win as many of those as you like if you get drawn as the winner more than once i will put your name back in the hat so to speak and draw somebody out so i hope that's clear if you've got any questions or queries about that feel free to contact me as i say if you want to be entered into the draw you need to be a subscriber and you need to comment below but if you want to contact me through my other media outlets um, you can private message me on YouTube, you can messenger me on Facebook, you can DM me on Instagram, you can contact me via my blog, and if you look on my blogger profile, you'll be able to find my actual email address. So, you know, I don't mind how you contact me, because I know sometimes people have problems um, commenting on YouTube for various reasons. So basically, you know, if you're known to me, then you're as welcome to these charts as, as anybody else. But it will be a random, I will pick the winner randomly. So that's all probably about as clear as mud, but there you go. So that's me all caught up on stitching activities as far as YouTube goes. This video will, will be, I promise, the last of my long videos. I'm sort of looking to do my other videos to be sort of a maximum of 15 minutes, if that. So there'll be smaller videos throughout the month. I just find that a bit easier to manage than one massive chunk where I talk about everything and that's when I start losing interest. I have the attention span of a gnat, my sister will tell you. So this is why she says I have problems doing long videos because once I've stitched something and I've finished it, I'm done with it, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, on to the next one. So I'm not necessarily that enthusiastic about it. So hopefully doing shorter videos more frequently as and when I finish things, I'll remember what I wanted to say about it and it will just be better for everybody, hopefully at least that's the plan. So thank you for sitting through this video right to the end if you have indeed done so. Um, hopefully I'll manage to catch up with a few more videos of yours because I haven't been watching as many. So I shall try and catch up as best I can. If you've got any questions about anything you've seen in this video or just general 
random needlework questions, you know where to find me by now and I'm happy to answer and help people where I can. So that's, that's it. Uh, I'll see you whenever my next video is. So I'll just say thank you very much for watching and happy stitching.